welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. It's so good to be here, be here with you. And uh, you know, every day I pray for new viewers. I have no doubt that the Lord gives them to us. So welcome one and all. And if you will stay tuned today, you're going to hear a story that will really, I would say, knock your socks off. Maybe some of you have heard uh, Saul Pichon from uh, New Life Solutions, but many of you have not. And if you've never believed in miracles, uh, this story just might change your mind. And that's all I will say about it, but uh, I kind of get goosebumps every time I hear about it. Uh, the miraculous fact that Saul is here today and the kind of ministry he has. So glad he's back. It's really been too long. And I'm going to join Stephanie and we're going to make, get this, I never heard of them before, but she said she's fixed them. Pumpkin pancakes. Oh my. I, I, do, punk, I do pancakes about twice a year, you know, if you go to a pancake house. And um, nothing is better. But I never would have dreamed of pumpkin. So we will see how they turn out and let you know. Okay, before I join her, I was going through stuff in our office and I have a few more of the cross necklaces with the matching earrings. And so I thought, well, I'll let you know about it one more time. Um, maybe you better ask for it right away because it's very possible we could run out. But for that gift, uh, two homekeepers of $24.95, you can see it there on your screen. I think it's beautiful. We will get it to you. And if you use a credit card, that number is there, 1-800-229-0059. Or the address is there as well. And our address is box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we'll be glad to get those out to you. And I'm joined, Stephanie. Yep. Uh, I keep telling you, I just love the scarf. It's fabulous. Oh. Doesn't it look at yourself? Isn't it beautiful? Well, well, oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Okay, pumpkin pancakes. And you said you've done it before. Yes, I have a great memory that we'll talk about when I get, let me get going, and then okay. we'll, I'll tell you my favorite pumpkin But you pancakes. had quite an exciting weekend. Okay. You <laughs> want to tell our friends. They always want to know what you're doing. No, not, they really don't. <laughs> went and visit, visited a friend who had um, her femur broken, so I went and took her a bunch of yummy desserts. Mm -hmm. And then I, my husband's out of town, so like I'm a bachelorette. So I'm just Gotta visiting go have everybody. Fun. So I went with another friend out to the Columbia restaurant on Sand Key. We sat on the water and we had dinner right there. It was fabulous. Yes. Uh, Columbia restaurant, has it been here about a hundred years? Mm -hmm. I think it I think it has. The nineteen oh five salad is the best thing ever mm -hmm. created. Yeah. Ever created. It's definitely a staple of Tampa Bay. And then Sunday and I went to church. Mm -hmm. I went to Dollar Tree and picked up a whole bunch of greeting cards because it's time for me to connect again. I just love to send out greeting cards every once in a while to people. Do you say, I hey, love I'm to get them. About I, I need to, I need yeah. to follow you on 50 that. 50 cents. You can't, 50, cent. 50 cents at the Dollar Tree. I'm you telling you, it. sometimes it will lift a spirit. Yes. 50 yes. cents, you 50 can cents. lift somebody's and spirit. And then I watched football for nine hours, so that was my day. <laughs> I knew they'd want to know. Home. My weekend couldn't <laughs> touch that, so let's do the pancakes. Okay, so we have a cup of flour. I clean house on weekends. That's oh, really. Yeah, I just try to do that through the week, so my weekends are free. Mm -hmm. I have a, a tablespoon of sugar. I have some baking powder. I have cinnamon. I have pumpkin pie spice. Mm -hmm. Yay! And we will confess, this I is pumpkin. Pumpkin, um, but it called for the puree. I couldn't find it, but. You know, I think this works just as well in any we'll recipe. We'll see. I really do. If it doesn't, we'll blame it on that. Yes, for sure. And then I have an egg. I'm going to do a, just a dash of nutmeg. Little dash. And you got that and heating I have, up? Yep, I have that Kay. heating up. I'm going to start with a lot of the milk. Let's not put it all until we figure out um, if we have the right amount. So my, you, go ahead. Do you like fix a uh, big breakfast on Saturday or? You know, I used to, but now, you know, Alexis is doing her own thing and it's just Dave and I, and Dave's not a big breakfast eater. So it would just be mm -hmm. me and what a waste. So no. So you probably won't use all that milk, you think? Well, I'm just making sure. I don't, we don't want it too runny, mm -hmm. but we want to have a nice pancakey consistency. You know, when I uh, noticed this recipe and thought it would be fun to do, what other kind of, um, 
flavoring things you'd put in pancakes. Oh, I've had blueberry. Blue, I'm, I, I'm sure there are a million. There's probably no oh, end to no what you end. could do. I mean, just think of IHOP and they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love a pecan waffle myself. Oh, that sounds good. You can make waffles out of this exact uh -huh. same. Get a waffle. Now, I, I cannot tell you the last time I ever made pancakes. It's oh, probably really? been 50 years. So I don't know how runny they're supposed to be. Okay, I'm gonna, I think this is good. So my daughter's 16th birthday, we went out to the beach. We got four cottages out on the beach. So we had quite a few people. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so the next morning I got up and I made pumpkin pancakes for everybody. And you impressed them. It, and, and I remember I forgot an ingredient. I don't remember which ingredient it was and they still came out fabulous. And how old is she now? She's 19. And that's the last time you've done the pumpkin thing? Yep. Sad, huh? Uh huh. It's just sad. Yep, her 16th birthday. That was a great party. We had all the cottages that the little place had, so we didn't have well, to worry about Well, 16 is uh, pretty important. Yeah, it was fun. Important birthday. Okay, uh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. But let's mention that you. I did not, yeah, don't pour it all in. She yeah. used, it calls for a cup, and she used only three quarter, and that looks. Perfect, really. No, no. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but we haven't tasted them yet, so. You know what? We I, always tell our guests. Look, see, we said perfect, and then I messed up. We always tell our guests if they do good, we'll give them something to eat. So, Saul has been salivating over this idea they of smell, pumpkin. <laughs> mm, they smell really, really good. Pressure's I just need on, to give Saul. Them a <laughs> so, do you have any pumpkin? Um, Pumpkin what? Uh, any memories? Pumpkin memories of anything? Well, pumpkin? my mom, my mom was a good pie baker. Oh, uh, she she really was. I don't know if she ever baked the pumpkin pie. Oh yes, she did. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh and yes, this, she did. This is the kind you want: pumpkin souffle. Oh. To me, a regular pumpkin pie is kind of heavy. Yes. And um, so the souffle put a lot of whipped egg whites in it or something. Mm, and so it was more was it was more fluffy? Delicious, yes. Much lighter. Oh, good. I'm, just, I'm, I'm letting the center of these get done. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> because um, if you eat a raw well, pancake, you you're not going to be happy. And the camera will catch it. Yes. So Yes. Can't lie, out, can't lie our way out of that no, one. No. <laughs> no way. I do think it's important, though, that Stephanie watch that milk. I probably would have dumped the whole thing in knowing that the... Recipe is much wiser than I am. Yeah, well, that's the lesson learned. Yeah. You know, then you have to add more flour. Then you have to add more of this. Yeah. So just. Yeah. Okay, just eat from the edge. Okay. <laughs> just in case the center's not. <laughs> yeah, because we got. Oh, poop. Yeah, I was going to say, make sure you doctor it up. We got to talk to Do it the. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. He is a miracle. I wish I knew if pancakes mm. are a. American. You had a pumpkin butter for this? Yes. Is there such a thing as a yeah, pumpkin butter? Yeah, you can make butter? pumpkin butter, sure. You well, this this should... Cream cheese. This should pull up. There, there we go. There you go. Okay. You could do pumpkin cream cheese in the middle of two pumpkin pancakes with pumpkin butter. There's your fork. Okay. These are really this a nice consistency. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Yep. I bet I haven't had a pancake in six <laughs> weeks, six months anyway. That's delicious. It is absolutely delicious. That's good stuff. Perfect, uh, you know. Fall breakfast. Beginning October, you got to do a lot of pumpkin. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be glad to send you the recipe, absolutely no cost whatsoever. Email us, we'll email it right back or write to us if you don't have a computer and we'll be glad to send it to you. It's awfully good, you want to use it this season. Say with me, if you haven't met Saul, you're going to love it. That is. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Welcome back to Homekeeper Saul Pichon, who is a 
CEO for New Life Solutions, and that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different organizations. Family of ministries, yes. Uh, yeah. All dealing with pro-life. Amen. That is right. Every one of them. From prevention, you know, where we're out in the schools, Arthleen, where we've spoken to 120,000 students to try to prevent uh, teen pregnancies and STDs, mm -hmm. to our intervention, that's our five mm -hmm. pregnancy centers, to our post-abortion, which is uh, restoration, and then we have perinatal comfort care for those who get a... Um, a diagnosis mm -hmm. from the doctor that that uh, baby may not make it. And then we have affordable housing with Shepherd's Village and we have the birth center, the only birth center that's associated with mm -hmm. the pregnancy center in the country. And we just had our 800th baby a couple weeks ago. Born and that's there. A, born there. And, and that's open to the whole community. So there's And very, some of them are born in the water, right? Oh, 80 percent. Eight out of 10 babies, moms. So they, choose they get in the to, swimming pool. <laughs> yes, they do. And their and their partners, um, a lot of them are married, a lot of them aren't. And uh, they can go in there with them. They put on their swimsuit, that husband, and um, is there with their with their their wife and welcome their baby into the world. And the together. little little tadpole. <laughs> little tadpole, yes. <laughs> a, a special creation from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Saul, in case you didn't pick that up, is in the uh, in the pro-life uh, ministry. But there's a reason that you are, and I want you to go back. Uh, I don't know if our history is in our schools anymore, but I remember, I was very, very young, but I remember the Second World War. I remember the Holocaust. I remember the, you know, reading about the, uh, what, six to 10 million Jews, I guess mm -hmm. we don't know for sure, who were yeah. executed. And your mother was in Auschwitz. She was. Um, where, where were they rounded up in Germany? Actually, my parents, both parents, were in a concentration camp. They didn't know each other at you know at that time. But from Greece, we're Greece. From, we're from Thessalonica, Greece. I was born there as well. I'm you a and the Apostle Greek Paul. Jew. Not not quite that old. <laughs> <laughs> but people don't realize that the Nazis. I didn't they, know that. They over overran number of countries, and Greece was one of them. So they occupied Greece for a couple years, and they were telling the Jewish people that they were going to send them to Poland, uh, where there they would have uh, land and homes and everything. So when the did day they came, believe them? They did. Unfortunately, they did. My mother was a little girl, and her Greek friends would tell her, "says they're they're out to kill you all. They don't like you Jewish people." And and uh, she'd go home tell her parents, and her parents just didn't buy into it. And how old was she when she went she into was, Auschwitz? She was just at 16, at 16. So by the time they, they put them on the train, they were expecting passenger cars, it was cattle cars. My father, my grandfather had already been killed and she ended up on, the, on that um, cattle car, in that cattle car with uh, her mother and four sisters. And when they got off, they were in Auschwitz and they took my mom separately because she was 16, they were gonna put her in a work camp and that day, her mother and sisters perished in, in the gas chambers. And there she was in block 10, which was an experimental block. And the way she shares it is there were over 300 young girls. She said from about 12 on up to 30. And they experimented on, many of them died, they bled to death. They were, they were uh, sterilizing. They were gonna sterilize they them. Gonna sterilize So them. that Jewish people couldn't reproduce. Right, and it just, and again, experimented on them for various things. She hadn't told me all the things that have happened. She's still alive, she's 90, uh -huh. praise God. But there she was, 16 years old, found herself on the operating table, and she said it was Dr. Mengele who personally operated on her. And he removed one of her ovaries, ready to remove the other one, but God intervened. And the Allied forces started bombing. The Yanks are coming, the Yanks are oh coming. man. Okay. And so what happened then is they ran for cover. They got one ovary. They, were, they got one ovary and they ran, the Nazi doctor and, and the soldiers ran for cover and they instructed the imprisoned Jewish doctor, this older doctor, they forced him to do operations and they instructed him to remove the other ovary. Well, obviously he didn't. But what he did is he said this to my mother, he says, I've got to make an incision to make it look like I'm gonna remove that organ, but I'm not going to. I want you to do two things. One, I want you to hide your cycle each month. And secondly, remember me when you have children and name that first one after me. And so I'm named mm. after him. 
um, and there's a story behind that. But, but you know, I've said for years, my mother survived a Holocaust or World War II, and God has me serving him in a Holocaust of abortion here in America today. So I know. You're giving God, me goosebumps. Oh, boy. but you, you and I both know that God has a plan and a purpose and a calling and a destiny for every child no matter how, when, or where they were conceived, mm -hmm. that will only be fulfilled by that child. And let me add this too, Arthur, is that the Allied, the Allied forces came and liberated the, those in the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. We're the Allied forces, mm -hmm. the, 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 the Christians, mm -hmm. the, the believers, the body of Christ. And if we aren't there on the front lines helping to liberate those children uh, and uh, whose moms are looking at having an abortion, no one else will. And that's right, why and the pregnancy God centers are so for important. This ministry. I want to go back to this doctor, I believe it's Joseph Mengele. Mengele yes. Uh, very famous, if you know your history at all. He was Satan personified. He had yeah. to be Satan in the flesh. Um, do you know what ever happened to him? Was he ever tried? No, he wasn't. Uh, the, what, what we have read on him is he, he escaped to South America. But somewhere along the line, someone found him because he was beheaded. Yeah. And so, you know, we, you know, they get paid, they got paid for what they did. The, so. the atrocities unending and uh, God always has the last word. He does. One thing about your story that I find extremely interesting because Americans are drive through, they drive through for their food, for their bank. It'll be church before long, you know, put your tithes in and here's the sermon. But um, God is pretty long range and there was your mom mm -hmm. in that concentration camp and he was seeing you this many decades later, yeah. Uh, yeah. saving the babies of Florida. You go on be beyond Pinellas County and yeah, all yeah, that. We do. But yeah, you're right. Because as it says in scripture, he knew us from the foundation of time. Mm -hmm. And he has that plan for us and a destiny mm -hmm. for us. Little did I know I would be doing this. Because um, long story short, I was in, in the mental health field for a number of years. And I, was, I uh, worked in the uh, psychiatric hospital for three years with mm -hmm. Rafa and then in private practice for a number of years. And then one day Raul came to me, the former yeah, president, remember, remember Raul? Mm -hmm. And um, you were there at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. helping, save, helping save children. And so he came to me. I used to pick at the abortion clinic. You did, you did, you and Herman. Mm -hmm. I tell you. <laughs> we, we, we thank you so much for your stand. Your well, theirs. it's wonderful to watch all of this, uh, even from my vantage point because from that time 30 years ago i believe it's called the christian action council and i think it was birthed in billy graham's home i could be it may have been yeah yeah i think francis schaefer was there I've read some of the history on it and here we are today with these various um and you uh, each each following leader has taken it beyond and we'll go into some of those, but I don't want to miss this one. Mm -hmm. You're the first one, maybe the older one, to have a ministry to what we, I call the men of abortion. Yes, yeah. Because sometimes a girl will abort a baby that the daddy doesn't want aborted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a husband, a boyfriend, or parents have urged and urged and urged an abortion, and then it comes back to slap them. Mm -hmm. You know, the best um, example of this in the Bible is King David. Yeah. When he, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and he sent Uriah to the front line to get killed, um, boy, his conscience just hounded him for it a did. year. It did. And the yeah. truth is there's a place to go with that conscience. There is. And I, I think with him, with King, with King David, it's uh, Nathan, the, the prophet, yeah. confronted him. I can see that. I bet he had uh, yeah, his yeah, finger in his did face. Too. He confronted him. Mm -hmm. And the thing with David, he had a repentant spirit. That's yeah. why God loved him so yeah. much. And, and there are a lot of men out there who do have a repentant spirit. And, and if they have that opportunity to go into a men's post-abortion oh, recovery yeah. group. A place to go. It, they're a safe place. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've led a number of them over the years, and I've trained two wonderful gentlemen, mm -hmm. uh, Mike and Brendan, and, and there's others that are being trained mm -hmm. to do men's groups. Now, there's, there's a number of women's post-abortion recovery groups right. all over the country, mm -hmm. very few men's groups. And so it's needed. 
it's needed. So we're, we're fortunate we have leaders like them who've been raised up to do that. Now what we need is for the church, the church mm -hmm. to be able to pr um, promote those, uh, uh, those recovery groups yeah. <clears throat> in their bulletins. Many of the churches are doing it and uh -huh. some of them aren't. So that's what we do. And it's done pretty much throughout the country as far as those post I'd like to groups. be a fly on the wall in one of those meetings because uh, we gals, we're pretty good at, oh, this is yeah. what's wrong, yeah. and, and we can, you know, cry a little more easily than men. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it'd be very touching to hear a man express exactly what that's like. We've got the website on the screen. Please write it down. And I, I want to appeal to anybody, especially in this area of Florida, uh, mostly in Pinellas County, Florida, every church should have you as a mission field, as yeah. you know, where you're going <clears> to <throat> give mm -hmm. this amount of dollars to this ministry. I appreciate that, and and we are blessed. There are a number of churches mm -hmm. that have us in their missions budget, but a number do not. Mm -hmm. And so we ask that if they would put us in their mission yeah. budget, and that we partner with the church because this way, the church doesn't have to have a pregnancy center outreach, doesn't mm -hmm. have a have to have. Right. Um, but that we have all these other family of ministries that can help the church, and they're the bride of Christ. We know our place. We're a paraclete to the church, but there needs to be that outreach for church folks to come and receive their healing. And one of them is post-abortion. That, that's a big one. That's and I huge, believe there's yeah. more depression, more anxiety, more suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. more suicides mm -hmm. because of the abortion issue in our country. I heard it put, you know, um, abortion uh, is may be the law of the land, but it was never God's plan. Exactly. And we, it's the church that needs to stand up mm -hmm. and do something about that. And I, I you know, I'm hoping that pastors will realize that the local church, they're not equipped for everything. That's, that's why you need to support these yeah. other uh, ministries that are, they're professional. They know how to, yeah. uh, how to deal with these uh, various um, outcomes yes. from oh, abortion. Yeah. And sometimes there, it seems like there's absolutely no end. Now, besides these wonderful churches, and there should be a lot more, wouldn't it be great if Every church in Pinellas County uh, would just give a few dollars to this, probably lift a little load off of it you. It would, it would, yes. What, what is your biggest fundraiser? I know you've got one coming up, uh, which is a uh, benefit banquet. Mm -hmm. It's our benefit dinner. We have two of them, uh, one in Tampa for mm -hmm. our Tampa locations, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, one over here in Pinellas County at the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be November, November 5th in Tampa at mm -hmm. Raymond James uh, mm -hmm. uh, Stadium mm -hmm. and then the Coliseum over here on um, Saturday, November 7th. Mm -hmm. And those are our big ones and our Walk for Life. Yeah, Walk, walk for, for Life. life. That's, uh, a, that's a big Boy, you got a gal us. that gets me every Gail's year. great. What's her name? Gail, Gail Friedman Barry. No, 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 the one that calls me and she's just a little lay lady in Suncoast Cathedral. Oh. Yeah, she gets right. me every year. All right, Arthelene, <laughs> what you oh, going to okay. give? You're talking about Irene. Yeah, Probably yeah. Probably Irene and Irene, Ina May. Yeah. Two sisters in their 80s who mm -hmm. have raised over $150,000 yeah. for this ministry. And it costs on the average about $1,200 to help to save, save a, baby. A, a baby. And yeah. they probably don't do the walk for life, but she does it on the phone. I'm telling you, it's the clockwork. Yep. And, and people can be praying for us. I would be so under conviction if I turned oh, her down. <laughs> I know, I know it. And she asked me to, God. and I give her Oh, my, does she? <laughs> absolutely. That's right. Oh, good for that's Irene. Right. Yes. That's the way to do it. And then again, that's mm -hmm. the body of Christ. Everyone, mm -hmm. everyone um, pulling together, mm -hmm. praying, uh, contributing, and uh, having, uh, praying for an end to abortion. We've said for years, our vision statement is to have an abortion-free, a salvation-full, discipled, and healed nation. There been some victories though abortion uh we're moving more toward a pro-life attitude in this nation i think the ultrasound machine was one thing big thing was huge yes but also these videos uh that planned parenthood are trying to say were edited come on i'm in television yeah <laughs> that wasn't edited yes. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, a lot of people are angry. I don't want one dime of my tax money going to Planned Parenthood. Uh, I think it's a very evil organization. And then that doctor 
from up north, I think. He's in jail now. Mm -hmm. um, th and, and I've heard that maybe in the state of Texas that more and more of these uh, abortion clinics have closed down. They have. I, I mean, I see, I see some progress. There is some progress. There, there is. And, and thank God for the, for the organization that, that really um, made it very clear to America that Planned Parenthood is, is like you say, is evil. Mm -hmm. uh, the folks there are blinded. We pray for their salvation. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thing. We pray for their salvation, for the abortionists, the, the staff, for them for, to, to scale, their to remove, remove their, from their eyes and see that it isn't women's health care. Mm -hmm. It's really terminating the life of an innocent child. Mm -hmm. And uh, God has a plan for that child. So the um, number one is the uh, sonogram machine. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten times when that mom or that teenager sees that baby, they bond. The whole family will mm -hmm. bond. Nine out of ten times, and they'll choose He's life. He's just swimming around in there. Oh, having a moving, good time. and sometimes even sucking their thumb. Uh -huh. That isn't made up. That is real. So, so you know, there's there's a movement that our younger people now, our millennials, they're much more pro-life than ever before. Mm -hmm. So there is a movement. But we got the morning after pill. That's a form of abortifacient. And, and half the time they don't yeah, even Yeah, Hobby Lobby won one like that, the Thank Supreme God. Court. We, we believe, we really believe in Hobby Lobby and what they stand for. Mm -hmm. And again, we, they partner with, with uh, pregnancy centers in their location out in Oklahoma. So we are going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We need the church to, to be even more involved. Yep, and I hope that a lot of good people have heard this message today. We are just about out of time. Mm -hmm. But let me, uh, just let me remind you that all of those who say, you know, it's, it's a crisis pregnancy, and no doubt it is. But there is a way. There is a way, and there are people who will help you through that pregnancy. I mean every step of the way, every detail. This man represents them. I hope you got the website that we've had up for quite a long time. And um, the volunteers that work there, yes. I, I don't know when I've been so moved as I've seen women especially being volunteers and a lot of them have had abortions they have. and they're and they're they trying best, to um, client advocates and that's that's the way the lord works too he takes those most unpleasant things in your life he turns around and he uses them for his glory yeah. so if you're in a crisis pregnancy uh, situation right now even if you're somewhere besides in florida mm -hmm. hope you got the website because they'll be happy to help you locate something close by but there are people to help you and don't forget, adoption is an option as well. Sorry we're out of time, but we are. Join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.